The book of Joshua is the sixth book in the Hebrew Bible and is also included in the Christian Old Testament. The book starts after Moses has died and the Israelites are about to enter the land promised to them by God through Abraham. Joshua is now the new leader of the Israelites. For years, they have been traveling and preparing to enter the promised land. This is a key part of God's covenant with Abraham. But one thing, the land is occupied. It's Joshua's charge to lead his people to occupy this land. Now, remember, Joshua is taking over from Moses, who had led his people out of Egypt through the wilderness and to the edge of the promised land. This is like stepping in the place of Gandhi, Lincoln, and Martin Luther King all rolled up into one. Standing alone, it is impossible, but we all know that with God, all things are possible. Keep in mind, Joshua was human just like the rest of us. His mind was preoccupied with the challenge before him, thinking about the task that he must do, feeling the weight of responsibility. Who knows what assassins may be lurking? I fear the knives of Hittite assassins far less than the loss of faith I see in my generals' faces. He looks up and there standing before him is a man with a sword drawn. That posture meant that this man was ready for battle. So Joshua's question is natural and Israel centered. Are you with Israel or against Israel? Like modern Christians, the challenge before us often becomes our battle, even when we are commissioned by God. The messenger recenters Joshua. This battle was not Israel's battle. It was the Lord's battle. When the messenger answers Joshua saying he was not on either side, he meant he was not here to take sides, but rather to take charge and to command the Lord's army. I'm on God's side, is what he really said. Joshua, quickly recognizing the necessity to submit, replies, what do you want the Lord's servant to do? This messenger wants Joshua to remove his sandals because he wants him to know that the place he stands and the challenges that are before him are holy and that he must submit to God. Joshua and modern Christians are reminded here that the Lord will fight for you and you only need to submit. Now, let's put this in some context. Israel is about to take on a tough battle. The land of Canaan is filled with fortified cities with high stone walls that are barred and people that aren't weak of large statute. Israel was seeking to remove them from the land. That meant Israel needed a decisive victory. Then and now, God never leaves his people seeking to do his mission without a divine plan. Now, controlling Jericho was important because it meant that they would have the high ground and the ability to control the rest of the countryside. The odds, however, were against Israel. This was not going to be a surprise. In fact, the people of Jericho stopped their normal activities in preparation for the siege by Israel. If Joshua had asked his military advisors, not one of them would have devised the plan described in chapter 6. This emphasizes to modern Christians that it's not necessary for us to understand God's plan, but it is necessary for us to obey God's plan. Before the Lord explains his plan, he graciously assures Joshua that the victory is his, saying, See, I have given you Jericho. Now, God's plan, to say the least, is unconventional. No battering rams, no ladders for the walls. Every day they are to march silently around the city with the priests carrying trumpets of ram's horns. The city is about 8.5 acres, about 9 or 10 football fields. On the seventh day, they were to march seven times around the city and the priests were to blow their trumpets. When the priests sounded their horns, Joshua would command the army to shout for the Lord had given them the city. When the trumpet sounded and the army shouted, the walls of the city collapsed right before them and everyone ran straight in, 
conquering Jericho. This unconventional plan taught the children of Israel, and it still teaches us today, that victory in the challenges before us depend upon God, our faith in him, and our faithfulness to follow his direction. In a world filled with facts, data, informatics, sometimes all of us must stand before individual giants with just a sling and a stone of faith so that the victory is not ours, but clearly his. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. Bye.